We're going to talk about our trip to Uganda. Hopefully, we're going to show pictures and uh, and go from there. Um, that's not one of them. In your bulletin, you will see three pictures. In your bulletin, there are three pictures. Uh, two of them are of Rhonda doing her thing, and one of them is a picture of me. Okay, there we go. There's the Uganda trip 2024. This here, if you look at this, this Rhonda wanted to show that it wasn't just Ray and Rhonda went on a trip. There were, can we kill the lights? Russ, can we turn the lights off, please? Then I can see better and maybe everybody else can too. There. You recognize some of those fine people there? This, the lady, and, oh, that doesn't even work. There we go. Yes. The, the picture of the lady on the, up there, on the, that's, that's Lois Connor. Lois Connor is in her mid-80s. Lois Connor has made about 4,500, that's 4,500 uh, dresses that have gone to Liberia and Uganda. And so just to kind of keep you up on who that is, there's some of those other people you'll recognize too. Um, this is the team that went uh, on the, the left, would be my left, would it be your left? Yeah, on the left. Uh, if you notice, there's uh, Matari is standing the third from the right there, and right behind him is uh, Sonny. They are from Liberia. They're a part of Hope too, and they're from Liberia. Matari's first trip on an airplane. Uh, he, he was very excited about, oh, am I going to have to fly back? Uh, and then Sam in the middle and the red in the back, and next to him is Edward. This is uh, a picture of the, of the whole team a little bit better. Uh, this was when we were at the... Uh, game refuge and reserve. The, the lady on the far right there, that is Jacinta, that is Edward's wife. And uh, she is a sweetheart. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed getting to know some of these. Some of these people I have been on trips with before. Uh, the gentleman standing next to Rhonda is Drew Jeffers. He works for Hope too, but I've been on to Liberia with him twice. Next to him is John Waddle. That is the cousin or the nephew of Lori, Kurt, Lori, who is one, two, three, fourth one over there. And right behind her is her son, Joseph, and her daughter-in-law is right next to uh, Sonny down there in the front row. So that was kind of a team uh, family affair. Rhonda wanted to show you how far it was from where we got off the plane to where we went. It doesn't look very far, but it's still six and a half hours on a bus. So it was, that was long that way. And there we are standing at the equator. When we got there, Rhonda was sick. She did not feel good at all. We got to the motel the first night. We stayed in the motel, and I knew that we were going to have this six and a half hour, seven hour bus ride in front of us. And I asked Sam if we could uh, just, Rhonda and I could just rent a car. And uh, so he arranged with the owner of the motel for us to, to rent a car. And so she was able to stay at the motel until about 1 o'clock. And we caught up with them. They stopped at the equator and had lunch. We did not, but they, we caught up with them and then rode the last little ways in. I have a couple other pictures of Rhonda at the equator. I guess she decided not to show those. <sighs> Uganda is a very beautiful country. It's very green. It's very lush. It has all sorts of uh, panoramic views. The city of Entebbe is very modern. It's got every, every amenity that you could ever think of. And in, you get out into the country, and it's outhouses, and it is 
uh, or latrines, and there's no, many places have no power, uh, but they can grow about anything they want to, uh, and coffee is becoming a very major cash crop. The banks are more than happy to loan you money if you got coffee in the ground, coffee trees. This, this is, uh, has this got a pointer on it? Which button is it? Is it this one? No, nope, go back. Well, somebody smarter than me can figure out that's not it. <laughs> Maybe this is it. There it is. I found it. This is Edward's car. They drive on the wrong side of the road. This is sugar cane that they use mainly to make alcohol. And anybody know what that is? That is an anthill. Yeah. Plantains. Bathroom. That's the ladies' bathroom, by the way. Aren't you impressed? Plantains is one of their main, it's one of the main things that they eat. It, every time we were served food at the motel, the plantains were a part of it, and you would see truckloads of them going by like this. Wrong button. These are bags of charcoal that people have made, and then they'll, those are, these are set up to be resold, and people will come in and they'll buy just enough for the day. They won't buy the whole bag. They'll buy just enough for the day because that's all the money they got. And so they'll buy just enough for the day. The, if you notice, the cows have got very big horns. They're pretty, and then this is, this is a typical, this is a typical street and a typical little market. And Lloyd, you'd be happy to know that Coca-Cola is very big there. Pepsi is not. <laughs> that is a live goat. Yes, a live goat. And he's, take, he's probably purchased it, and he's probably taken it home uh, to be slaughtered properly, because this is a Muslim man. This is this gentleman with his bike. This he's he's hauling petrol. Is what he's hauling. So he's probably he's come into town and he's going to take that to his village. And then he will sell that to people in uh, pint jars, quart jars, gallon jars at a time, they'll put it in their motorbikes. And, uh, and then, you, of course, you see, it just, this guy's just got something that he's taking to somebody. Who knows what it is? I don't know what that is. But th what was funny about this, if, if you've ever been to Liberia, which I have, and I know that probably some of you have, the Liberians were laughing. They said this was overloaded. Uh, if you've ever been to Liberia, you're going, hey, that's a half a load. You know, they, they, they load the vehicles, they'll overload them all the time. And, but they, I got a kick because they laughed at that. Typical market again. And you see this one over here is a little, little better made maybe. But this is just, this wood here is for fire. This is for cooking. And about 3 o'clock in the afternoon... Uh, I can guarantee you what's going to happen. Somebody's going to come out and they're going to build a fire in here somewhere. There's a fire pit along there somewhere. And then they're going to start cooking chicken or corn to sell to people. And, and they'll, or meat that they'll stick on sticks and, 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 and sell to people. What are those fruits they get? Uh, tin, zinc, they'll tell you. They'll tell you zinc. Uh, most of the roofs are, are tin. You do still see a few thatched roofs, Ron, but not nearly as many as you used to see. This was our welcome to the orphanage at Rockeye. 
They, the, little, the children were out with signs and singing as we came in. Uh, they knew we were coming, and they were, they were excited about the fact that we were going to be there. This orphanage sits up on top of a hill. And I think I've got some pictures that we're going to show you here. It is absolutely gorgeous to look out from it. Uh, just beautiful. All of these, these pictures and these that you see back here, all this stuff that's on the walls, it's all done freehand. There's no stencil or anything involved in that. I watched the guy work on, on those, painting those uh, pictures. It's impressive. This, this is on the outside of the gate, of the fence. This is on the inside. This is the road that comes in. Uh, these are some classrooms over here. There, there he's working. He's, that's all been done by freehand. I can't even draw stick figures. This is Louise. I would have brought her home with me if I could have. She is a sweetheart. This, this picture doesn't give her, do her justice. She's got the prettiest eyes, and they're just, they just sparkle. And uh, just, just a really a sweet young girl, orphan there at the orphanage. This is one of the houses at the orphanage. We're, we're sorting through some of the dresses and, and, and things in here and some of the medical supplies that we did bring. But this, was the, this is the front room. This is where you walk in. Uh, that's the kitchen, and to its left is the bathroom, which is about half the size of the kitchen. And, and then that's a, that's a bedroom. This is where one of, the, one of the teachers lived there, and we were using their kitchen to cook some food for ourselves. These are just some of the young people at the orphanage. I wrote in one of the deals, and some, I think it was Katina said, Oh, that's an awfully long day. They go to school at start at 7.30 in the morning. They get done at 5.30 in the afternoon. And they have an hour off for lunch. And figure that out. That's more than an eight-hour day. They go to school for a long time. But uh, this little car right here, they literally made that that day. There was... Um, Three of the guys from our group uh, went in with some of these, some of the boys, and, and and they built these little cars. They built three or four of them, and uh, we're playing with them. And this is just a pond that's out. It's in next to the medical center. Is there? One of the one of the things that part of the money that always goes for the trip, part of it goes to buy things for different situations. Sometimes we have bought rice and, and stuff like that. Sometimes, but in this case, we bought mattresses because somebody had broke into the orphanage and stole the mattresses. And so this was half of the mattresses that we bought. We bought, they didn't have all that we were going to get, and so they were going to go back the next day and get them. This is one of the, the teachers there who is a pastor at a, a church, and I'm not sure if that's his wife or not, but that's one of the ladies that worked there. If you notice the rubber boots, she's been down at the coffee. She's been down planting coffee and corn. Uh, it, they were planting corn at that time. They were planting coffee trees. And uh, you notice the kids' clothes, uh, they all have the same color, but some of them are, are pretty pretty well worn, and Rhonda left some money with Jacinta, uh, that some of the extra money that her and I took with us, and we le she left money there for her to go buy fabric so she could make some more clothes for the kids. They make them all. They don't, they can't buy, they don't buy them. She doesn't feel good, folks. She's sick. This is the second day we're in country. And she, she, is lit, she does not feel good at all. But look at that. Still got her smile. And she's teaching the kids some macrame. They were supposed to make keychains. Um, they made necklaces. 
<laughs> they made, uh, uh, there was actually one who made exactly what they were supposed to, but the rest of them all did different things. The thing that I thought was interesting, we came back three days later and they were wearing them. They had, they were still using them. But Rhonda, they told her there'd be about 40, uh, maybe 40 kids. There was, she ended up with about 70 kids around her for a while and uh, working, and she, she worked through the whole thing. It was pretty impressive. This is Matari, that cat right there. Rhonda's got a picture of that cat sleeping on my foot. This is Edward's dog. These are some of the pigs that they have there. And these are the cows. They, they have cows for both for meat and for milk. And uh, as you can tell, we're on top of the hill taking a picture of that and looking across. This over here is the Tanz Tanzania border. They are doing everything that they can to be self-supporting. Okay? This is when I wish the videos would work. This, this is where they, they had church at, is in here. And then the government was told them that they needed to have some training stuff in each of the classrooms. And Sam's sister, this is Sam, Ellie made these quilt, like their quilt deals that you, you put them on the wall and you got a lesson on one side, you turn them around and they got pictures on the back, back side of them. But these were, nobody had told her that they needed them, but she made those so that the kids would have their, this, and this one's alphabet, they have numbers uh, on one, and there were several of them that she made. This little guy didn't want his picture taken. This one did. And he grabbed him by the arm, pulled him over toward him, and then they took it. That's Louise again by the, there. Edward and Sam, and they're teaching, they are teaching at the, at the pastor's conference. That was for two days. And uh, started it on, let's see, started on Friday at noon and got done at about 8 o'clock. Started on Saturday at 8 o'clock and got done at 8 o'clock. I was tired. But uh, the people were just, they were excited to be there and to be having some training going on and some teaching going on. This gives you a little bit of an idea. The, the videos are, are pretty awesome of, of the people singing and, and dancing and uh, celebrating. And these are just some of the older, older people, and this is some of the kids that are there. This is at church on Sunday morning. Well, really, it wasn't Sunday morning. We got there about noon. <laughs> the floor is... Uh, was concrete at one time very poor concrete these are apple trees those tree those are are put into those bags by a group that has for, that, that formed to help each other so it's a co-op there's about eight of them involved in it eight or nine of them I, I sat and watched them I stood and watched them as they were planting these trees. Edward's buying each one of those from them for a dollar a piece. And then they will plant them. Uh, this is their, their little nursery area. These are some coffee beans that are not ready to pick. They'll turn red. And then this is part of our little tour to go look at the trees. But he's buying these. They're, they're, they're putting 10,000 of them together. He's going to buy them, and the, the goal for them then is each one of these people, when they've raised enough money, they will buy a piece of property for them, for one person. They will continue to help them and work with them and then the, until they each have some property so that they can take care of themselves. Most of the people that are doing that are uh, ministers and churches. 
Is that pretty or not? That is, is, it's beautiful. This is looking from the property that was purchased by Hope 2 for, for trips and for team. It says teen. It should be team training. I thought Rhonda was going to fix that one. But we'll take teens and train them too. But uh, this is looking out over the, the valley from there. And the nurse, the orphanage is back over this way just a little bit. That's the start of the building. This is going to be the Hope Center in Uganda. This building will eventually be two stories high with a deck that runs clear around the hole outside of it. And then in this area over here, there is already a kitchen building that's built right here. But this will be an outdoor uh, cooking area to bar barbecue and that kind of stuff. But uh, it'll be three stories high. Uh, it'll be two stories high, and the roof will be able to be uh, used also for uh, different issues, different things. This is Edward's house. That I, if I was to guess, Edward's wife and three of their kids still live here. Edward probably spends three months a year here at night. He's on the road traveling all the time, different churches, do, teaching different people and stuff. This is where the orphanage used to get their water. This is if if this right here is where the orphanage is at, and it's actually right over this way, but if you went from the orphanage, went down to the bottom, 25 minutes to walk down there, get your water, walk back up to the top, right? Not once, not twice, not three times, until you had enough water that was gathered for the animals, for you to bathe, to wash dishes and cook, and to have water to drink. Not that I don't think I would want to drink it, but now they have they have that they don't do that anymore. They put in a cistern system. They can store about twenty thousand gallons of water up at the orphanage now with from rainwater, and they collect it all and they store it in cisterns up there. And so the the young people are not having to walk down there. Some of the people from our team walk down there and back. And I thought that Olivia Tempest said it the best. She said, she said, we went down to the bottom. I had a jug that I put water in. And she said, and then I began the journey back up. She said, it took me 25 to 30 minutes to walk back up the hill. And when I got up there and I thought, this is all I've got is one little tiny jug of water which wouldn't even take care of, you know, one little pig. And I, so she says, I do not know how many times they had to go down and up and down and up and down and up to collect water that's not very good. How often is it raining? They, they have two rainy seasons a year, Ron. Uh, we were there, we got rained on a little bit. I just got uh, communicated with a person there, and he said that they've had way lots of rain lots of rain lately so they it's kind of like southern california either you don't have any or you have more than you want that's kind of what happens i think a little bit there too this is where we had the pastors training at the motel where we stayed we stayed there for uh seven nights there was we rented 13 rooms I think that's right 13 rooms seven nights and they fed us breakfast and dinner and the total bill at the end of it was eight hundred dollars i don't know what magic edward was working but that's what the total bill was this young man right here this is joseph tempest this is kyle he's a farmer in 
Iowa. And this is McKinley Spring. It this is um, Sam's niece. And I don't recognize. I and this is Matari right here. Oh, and this is Jill. No, that's that's Karen. Jill's sitting over there somewhere. Matari has graduated from the college agricultural school in Liberia. Hope 2 sent him to that. And he has graduated. And right now, he is giving a, an example of farming God's way. And he's made two, he took two water bottles and he cut them in, in half the long way. And one of them he just put the dirt in and put and then put water in, and you know what happened, don't you? The, it all ran out. The dirt and everything ran out. And one of the farmers goes, that's what happens to my field all the time. And then he, the other one, this, the second one right here, he put grass and stuff over top of it, and then put the water in it, and it stayed in it. It stayed there. And, and you could hear the audible, oh, from, from them. So, Matari had them eaten out of his hands, so to speak, as he, was, as he was teaching them. Sam had assigned eight lessons to different people. Uh, I was one of them. Kathy taught a lesson. Olivia taught a lesson. Uh, Lori Tempest taught a lesson. Joseph taught a lesson. Matari, Sonny. So anyway, and... And those people, and they're all translated, and those people set through that whole stuff. I mean, with eagerly set through it, taking notes and uh, very attentive the whole time. So they were in, in suits. I'm warm in shorts and t shirt, and they're in suits. And so, yeah, just, just pretty amazing. There was a lady that sat right up in here, uh, a lady from uh, Uganda, that when she stood up, she was literally bent over uh, quite a little bit. She rode her bike. She wouldn't take a vehicle. Because if she took a vehicle, she had to pay more money for it. And she, she didn't want to pay more money because she had projects that she wanted to do at the congregation of people that she worked with. And so she rode her bike. Not from here to the store. Like from here to Lincoln City. Yeah. And she's, she's not as young as your mother is. And so she was very dedicated to what she did. Very, it's very humbling when you hear what they will do so that they can spread the gospel. We uh, brought all of the kids from the orphanage to the motel. They had, many of them had never been to town. Okay, they'd never been to town. And they had never been on a second floor of a building and there's three floors on part of that. They were in awe. I mean, th they were so excited when they got to go walk up the steps and come up to where the pastors were all at for a little while just to kind of have the experience of going up the stairs or the ramp. But we had a half a day of VBS for them. We had 80 kids. You, you, you school teachers will get this. We had 80 kids. And we didn't have one argument all day. And there were prizes awarded. And we had nobody complaining the whole time that they were there. They were just excited to be there. This is Drew and Kyle. That's Karen. These are some of the people from Uganda that were there with the children. 
the ball caps were something that they, they had won in some of the little contests. This is Olivia right here. You'll get to see her again. But this is just some pictures of, of the kids and what we, things that we were doing, thing, games that we played, and lessons that they had five... They had five... No, they had three Bible stories and they had five other stations where they played games and uh, they had a ball. They, they, they had a ball. No. Lots of sign language going on. Lots, <laughs> lots of... But Sarah, you'll get this. They're all, having, they're all eating their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that we'd fixed for them. They all sat down around the whole outside edge and were eating their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I can't remember what they were doing with the soccer ball, but they were, they were doing something. And it was warm. It was warm outside that day. Olivia and Laura. Lori is her mother-in-law. Olivia wants to have a baby. She's been married for two and a half years. She can't get pregnant. These two ladies shared their, their hearts with us the night before. The doctor, they both had doctor's appointments on the 27th of April. Lori to go in for surgery. She, they didn't know if she had cancer or not. They, had to go and do, they were going to do surgery. Uh, she didn't. It, it, everything turned out well. Surgery went great. Olivia, the doctor, said, yeah, you've got some cysts on your ovaries, but we think we can take care of it. We think that you'll probably be, we're, we're pretty confident that, you, that eventually you'll be able to have a baby. Uh, we, we took the time and, and prayed for them. This is Sonny. You, you have to understand that Sonny Sonny was a very sick child. He grew up in the Civil War. The soldiers forced his village of people to leave and to march, and Sonny was literally going to be left alongside the road to die. Except for his mother said, no, 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 no. And they got him, got him some water and stuff. And, and, and he, he survived. But uh, if I ever want somebody praying for me, I want it to be Sonny. Now, let me just tell you, he uh, very, very heartfelt. That was probably our most emotional night of the whole thing. And you have to understand that Lori is there with her daughter-in-law, with her nephew, and her son. And so uh, they, uh, it, was, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty tough night. It's not all, it's not, it's not all struggles and tough the whole time. We, we went on a safari. We went to, to that place. I cannot pronounce it, but that's where we went. And we went to the lodge, too. Holy moly, was that nice. Uh, it was it was very impressive, but uh, we saw zebras or zebras. There's the cows with their great big horns. Rhonda and I actually bought a dish that's made out of a cow's horn. It's like this big around. It's pretty impressive. What's this? Okay. You know what those are? Did you, Ellie, did you say hippopotamus? That's right. Gazelles, right there. What's that? Rhonda never saw any of them. When we were over there, Rhonda didn't see them. This one, this one right here was up by the lodge. It was on the trail that goes to the room that we stayed in. 
Those dudes are big. Oh, both, yeah, big old males. This is a brush buck of some sort. I'm not sure, but... Water deer? Water buck, yeah, that's right. And then this is a, a type of, a, of an eagle of some sort. They're big, too. They're really big animals. This was my picture. I took this one. That's a big water buck. That's right. What's this here? All righty. There's a bunch of them, too. There's the giraffes. They brought in, they brought in 15 giraffes in 2015, and now there are 75 giraffes there. And we didn't get the pictures of them, but when we first went, we didn't see any of the little ones. We went by them and went out and saw the, saw the hippopotamus and all that and came back. We hadn't seen any of the little ones. We come on the way back, we look out, and here's, here's four or five little giraffes chasing each other. You, that's the funniest thing to watch in your life because they're, they're all legs. What's that? I don't know. Monkeys. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I really don't know. I, I don't know. I asked and nobody could tell me. Up in a tree. This is at night. You can't see them, but there's, there's one there. There's one there. One there. All of the, the baboons got up in the tree as it got dark. And they're sitting up in the, sitting up in the trees for protection. There are a few leopards there. Uh, Rhonda saw one and Olivia saw one. Nobody else saw any. And then a monster. How do you eat that? You eat that with a knife and a fork. <laughs> you, you take it apart and eat that. Yeah, yeah, literally, they take it apart. Drew ordered one, and, and then this was Rhonda's uh, plate at the, at the lodge that we stayed at. This is at a place we stayed, where, where when we stopped at, that was Edward's first job when he went to Uganda. He was the trash man. And they, they called him the, gar, the, trash, pass, the pastor, trash pastor, is what they called him. But uh, he picked that. But this, these are the plantain leaves, and it's called, whatever the, however they pronounce that, Matoki, I think, or Matoke. And this was Rhonda's plate. She, she of course, Rhonda's got to be gluten-free. And uh, so she ordered this, this plate. It was unbelievably good. I helped her eat it. I mean, it was unbelievably good. It had some cheese and uh, diff fresh vegetables and uh, some, this was a pickled something, I can't, a uh, vegetable, it was, it was just good. <coughs> but there's what, on, as the national dish of Uganda, Motoke earns the first spot in the Uganda food guide. It refers to plantain bananas indigenous to southwest Uganda. The most common way to make matoke is by cooking and mashing it. It's very simil similar to a banana, but it is often steamed in plantain leaves and served with meat. It almost has a little bit of a potato consistency to it. And the first night that we were at the motel, I thought it was potatoes. It really tasted like potatoes. The next day, it did not taste like potatoes. Uh, but... No. It's that, oh, okay, let's, you, you asked a good question. We went to this place and we had, we had lunch on the way back. Thirteen of us ordered steak. There were three people, no, two people that ordered chicken. Two people that ordered that. And three people that ordered fish, I think. So there was 22 of us with drinks, soda and water, $110. I told Sam I would take us back the next day and pay for it myself, but 
we had other things we had to do. But yeah, $110. No, food is not expensive. There's one of the, t the dresses that Lois Connor makes. This is, this is uh, Sarah. This is Edward and Jeanette, Jacinta's youngest child. I think this is the last video, last, last picture. Uh, this is uh, Jill Sells and Karen. L I'll just tell you about a little story about Karen. Her husband went to Uganda two years ago. Her husband gave her dad's Bible to a young man while he was there. The young man happened to be the gentleman helping with our bus. He would, the, had a driver and then him and he would handle all the luggage and help with backing up and all that. He was the one that got the Bible. Karen and him sat and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked one day. And at the end of the time, she, he, she was telling us, I said, well, how did your conversation go? Oh, she said, it went wonderful. It went wonderful. In fact, he said to me at the end, he says, you know, I was, I, I've been raised as a Muslim, but he says, I really think I need to become a Christian. If he becomes a Christian, he loses his whole family. His family's gone. He's an outcast. But that's because he took his dad's Bible with him and gave it to somebody else. Okay, that's the end of that. But I have, I have something that I'm supposed to read from my wife to all of you. She wrote it out so I will not make a mistake. She said... This is Rhonda speaking. She said, I had the privilege to ride next to Edward most of the time in Uganda. Why did she have that privilege? Because she got on the bus and the steps were very high. The first step was very high and the second step was very high. And she, her knee gave out and she almost fell back off of the bus. Except for Sam and I caught her. And then Sam said, Rhonda, you can ride with Edward. And so she rode with Edward. And she, was, she had the queen seat most of the trip. She, and she goes, he, Edward, she says, I had the privilege to ride next to Edward most of the time in Uganda. And he has a real burden for the children who reside at the orphanage. He wants each child to know they are special and that they are created by God. When they were asked, who do you know loves you? Several children responded, I know Edward loves me. There are 82 children and Edward has eight of his own plus six adopted children. Edward has a real burden for the children. And just a quick glance, the orphanage was started because Edward and Jacinta started a school in Uganda. And when the children who had a two-hour walk each way from their home were at the school by 7 a.m., they asked how they had gotten there so quickly. And they were told, oh, we just slept in the grass across the street. It became apparent that the children attending the school needed a safe place to sleep and food to eat. Edward told me each child needs, a, needs to be sponsored, but I'm not talking about the usual way groups sponsor a child. The groups that collect money each month only send about $2 per child per month. They're going to ask you for 35 The money does not go to the child, but do not be quick to take away the gift of poverty that these children have. Think about that. I'm just reading what Rhonda wrote here. The gift of poverty. The gift of poverty. The gift of poverty provides a need for God, a need to depend on God. These children need to know how to develop a relationship. They need to understand family and how God created family to love each other. I am hoping to connect a family from America for each child. The child will receive letters and pictures and godly advice on how to live. They don't need things. They need to understand God's love. Yes, you can help financially by supporting Horp 2 or the orphanage, but where the real support needed is to help each child develop a sense of belonging, an understanding of love, a bond of family. This is in the very early stages, but I request prayers that if this is to be, God will continue to open doors and guidance.
Edwards. I'm not the only one that has a, a burden for the children. If you, if you go there, you would wonder which ones can I bring home. I'm, I'm serious when I tell you that. And I'm not talking just about the little ones. I'm, I'm talking about the 13-year-old girl that comes up and, and hangs on to your arm, just wants to be next to somebody. Uh, the, the 14-year-old boy that wants to tease and play uh, soccer with you, and, and you're old and slow and, and really don't want to play soccer. This, they just, you would wonder which ones of them can I take back with me. Uganda is, Uganda is both a second and third world country, depending on which part of the country you live in. Liberia, that hope to, is a, definitely a third world country and fourth world country in parts of it. So there, there's, there's difference between the two of them. There's, there's one thing, though, that is the same. And I wish this was as true in America as is there. The people are hungry to learn about God. They are hungry. Let, let me just tell you that if, if the people of Uganda knew that there was a church service here this morning there would not be an empty seat. There literally would not be an empty seat. And it would probably be standing room only. Because they'd want to, not only would they want to hear, they'd want to be with, with other people. And they'd want to, they'd want to celebrate that together. Uh, it's, I, I, I have got family members who always ask me, why do you go to Uganda? Or why do you go to Liberia? I go there so that I can come back and do what I do here. It's that simple. Uh, it, it's, like, uh, it's like going and getting uh, a, a, an energy boost. It's going and getting filled back up so that you can go and do, uh, do what, you want, what you feel like God wants you to do. Um, I am late, and I apologize for being a little long. But if you have any questions... I'm not in a huge hurry. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer some questions uh, uh, in, after, after we're dismissed. I'll be more than happy to do that. Won't, won't you stand together with me and we're going to have a word of prayer. Andy, do you have a closing song? Okay. Let's, let's stand together for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your, your grace. We thank you for your love and for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for these, these folks who had a part in helping Rhonda and I both go to Uganda and share there and to be encouraged and to hopefully be an encouraged to some of the people that were there. I pray that you would, that you would keep us hungry for your word and for what you have and want us to have each day. Lord, help us to not be complacent. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. In the morning when I pray.